What up? Welcome back to Talk Tuesday. Going up on the Tuesday. So today I'm back again with another video about history and one I think you guys will find pretty fascinating. If you didn't know, it is currently Gay Pride Month. June is Gay Pride Month. And you may not know that because the President of the United States has not yet acknowledged it. <laughs> He's so supportive of LGBT. Since the president has not acknowledged yet that it is Pride Month and our vice president supports conversion therapy, I thought today would be a good day to talk about a little bit of the history behind Gay Pride Month, why it's important, and things that I think most people don't know about it. I'm sure a lot of you know that it's Pride Month. Maybe you went to a Pride event. I was at Denver Pride over the weekend. It was a really fun environment. Pride events now are a fun time. They're a celebration. They're, you know, a time to just let loose and to be yourself and to love one another and I love going to those events for that reason. Pride is so fun because it's such a accepting and welcoming community. As many of you guys know, my little sister is bisexual. I have gay people in my family as well so it's very important to me and always has been. It's something I've talked about on this channel pretty much since I started, so. But Pride Month did not actually start as a celebration. It began as a protest. Things were very, very different for gay people 50 years ago, and one of the most common things I've been hearing lately, which has been really bothering me, is whenever talking about LGBTQIA issues, a lot of people instantly want it to shut down, they want people to stop talking about it, or they say things like, you guys already have gay marriage, like what's the big deal? Gay marriage is already legal, why are you still talking about it? Which is so, so uninformed. Even though gay marriage is now legal in the United States, let me remind you, it is not that way around the rest of the world in a lot of countries. Issues for LGBT people across the country are still very prominent. For many LGBT people across the country, their rights are still on the line. They still struggle with discrimination daily. And I think in parts of the country where it's maybe more liberal, uh, people are much more accepting of it. So you may not realize that it's still going on, but it is going on in full force in some parts of the country. Like I said, it wasn't that long ago that First of all, gay marriage was illegal, but way before all that, not even 50 years ago, it was very almost unheard of to come out gay because it was so unaccepted in society and unaccepted by the government. Being openly gay was not as easy as, not that it's easy now, but it was way, way difficult back then. It was almost unheard of. Like groups had to be so secretive about it. You had to really, really keep yourself behind closed doors, in the closet. I mean, it was like unsafe to come out. One of the first, I actually think it was the first gay society was started in 1924 by a man named Henry Gerber. And only a month into their organization, it was found pretty much Everyone involved with it was arrested, like over 20 people. Gay people throughout history, gay people have put on scare lists, like communist lists, so that police can follow their every movement. If they found out you were gay in a lot of positions, you were fired and nothing was done about it. Being gay was straight up illegal and enforced. There are times in history where if you were trans, you had to dress with at least four um, garments of male or female clothing based on your assigned gender. And there wasn't many groups, there wasn't many organizations, there definitely wasn't any support really. And even being able to protest was a very uh, rare thing. In fact, in 1965, there was a protest group that tried to form and were quickly shut down by the police. There's obviously so many other things that have happened, but one of the worst was that the APA, which is the American Psychiatric Association, um, they decided that being gay was going to be a mental illness. And it was actually a registered mental illness until I think 1973. And one of the craziest things about it is the scientists who had determined this ran a study on gay people who also had mental illness and then determined that all gay people had mental illness because of all their test subjects happened to be mentally ill. In the 60s, it was straight up illegal to be gay to dance with a man, to have, especially not to have sex with the opposite gender. The government was really cracking down on gay people. They weren't even allowed to be served drinks at bars. It was illegal for bars to serve drinks to gay people. They were trying to clean up the city of New York um, by locking people up, getting rid of people, beating people. I mean, so many terrible things happened to gay people back then. It's really amazing how far we've come. I mean, we have a long way to go but it is, it's almost a different world. We still have a long way to go with that as well, but I think it's important to recognize the steps that we have made 
see how we got there and see how we can continue to go further. So like I said, they wouldn't allow bars to have a liquor license if they were disorderly and serving gay people or having gay and trans people in your bar was considered to be disorderly. But that brings us to the point of this whole video and that is the Stonewall Riot. June 28th of 1969, um, there was a bar called the Stonewall Inn and this was in Manhattan and this was actually a sort of a gay club in downtown Manhattan and yes, it technically couldn't be considered a gay club, but it was and the reason why is the mafia was actually running this bar and a lot of the mob was running bars um, It was very common. There was so much mob corruption back then I mean, it's very different than what we can even understand now But there was a mob group that was running this bar and they were allowing gay people to be in there because they didn't care All they cared about was money and what they could do was blackmail people who went into the bar as a gay person and was you know straight in real life and use it against them for money. They're illegally bringing in tons of money and they're paying off the police. However, on June 28th of 1969, everything changed. The police came in, most likely because they were not happy with the split that they were given by the mafia. And they would raid bars all the time, take gay people to jail. They would, you know, normally come in and at least remove at least one gay person. So they were very used to this happening. However, there was absolutely no reason for the police to have come in. They were trying to find a reason, so they were going, they would line up everyone in the bar and ask them about it, ask them questions, try to find out their true gender, see if they could you know, find a trans person and bring them to jail. There were a couple hundred people in the bar. There was a couple hundred people outside already at this point, and they started bringing people into cars to arrest them. And there was this one lesbian woman who was being arrested, and her name was Stormy de Laravie. She took these cops by storm because she actually screamed out into the crowd, said, This is unfair, unjust, and why aren't you guys doing anything? And that started a butterfly effect. <laughs> For the future. People got mad. There was another woman who threw a shot glass at the police. People started throwing rocks, stones, yelling at them, screaming, finally fighting back for the years and years of discrimination, wrongful arrests, innocent people just being treated terribly because of their sexual orientation, and it all built up into a riot. This was one of the biggest riots to ever happen. Literally hundreds of people came out and people were fighting back. Um, police had to barricade themselves in the bar. It got pretty out of hand and and as you know, I'm really a person who's very against violence. I think this had to happen at the time to be able to start any type of movement to get people to join together, and it did. There were fires being made, windows broken. Luckily, no one died, which was good. But this definitely became a full-blown riot. There is a famous group of trans people that stood on the side of the street and started a kick line and actually were, you know, saying things that really upset the police, talking about pubic hair and, you know, just the freedom to be yourself and be who you are authentically without any apology. And it really freaked out the police. They were fighting back, beating people. This is when the police actually brought out batons, beat people in the streets. The rioting continued actually. It started up again the following night and I think the night after as well. And it brought a ton of gay people together against a common enemy and that is discrimination. And what was really cool about the Stonewall riots is after that, there were a couple different groups that actually started putting gay in their titles, which was really important because before that, most gay groups or gay organizations had to be called something completely random and avoid police. Pretty much became secret societies. So after the Stonewall riots happened, the Gay Liberation Front started, as well as the Gay Activist Association. And the following year in 1970, there was an annual um, march. It was called a march. It's kind of controversial now because some people like to call it a parade. It's a happy thing. We're celebrating. A lot of people look at it more as a march. I know in New York they call it a march. In other cities they call it parade. So it depends on who you're talking to. But on the anniversary of Stonewall, one year later, it was a march. It was a very serious march. There was actually a man who famously was quoted in the Village Voice publication in 2010 saying that back then, there were no floats, no music, no boys in briefs. Instead, it was just people saying, say it clear, say it loud, gay is good, gay is proud. They were clearly fighting for equal rights, for gay marriage, for all types of things. I mean, gay marriage wasn't even like, on the agenda back then because it was so far, they, they were still trying to stay out of jail. 
So things have changed a lot and I think a lot of people don't realize how far we have come by legalizing gay marriage. I think, what was it, 2015? It's gonna kick a lot of things into motion for the rest of the world and probably already has. After the first march, it spread to LA and then a bunch of other cities across the country. And by the 80s, most major cities had a pride parade or a pride celebration, pride march, whatever you wanna call it. And nowadays, it's pretty much widely known. So yes, we have come a long way. Rights for LGBTQIA people in this country have come quite a ways, but we cannot forget how far we still need to go, as we are definitely not treated equal. There are still people who are afraid of coming out. There are still people that take their own lives because they don't feel like they will be accepted by their family or friends. Gay children are still struggling in schools. The issues go on and on and on. Pride Parade is an important event, and I think a lot of straight people don't think they're allowed to be there. It's a celebration of love, not just gay people. It's for everyone. So maybe check it out next time if it's already passed in your city this year, or if there's still events going on this month for you in your city, go check them out. It's a great community, a great open environment, and accepting accepting people. You're definitely never going to find more accepting people than at a pride festival. Even though they're fun and entertaining and a great accepting environment, it's still a reminder of how far we need to go and that we should never stop fighting for our gay brothers and sisters to have equal rights. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed learning about the meaning behind Pride Month and how far we have come. And you know, it's really disappointing to have a president who has not even acknowledged this month at all. I mean, it's not over yet, so I still have hope that maybe he will, but I feel doubtful. It's disappointing because I remember in the beginning of the election, a lot of people were telling me, no, no, Donald Trump supports LGBT people. I would use the word doesn't care. Maybe he himself is not gonna actively try to do anything to discriminate against them or take their rights, but he certainly is not doing anything for them or showing any type of care. In fact, there were laws reversed this year for bathroom rights for trans people under the Trump administration. So I think that that is a load of BS and we have to be louder than ever at a time when our LGBT friends don't have much of a voice in the White House to represent them. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you were enjoying these history videos, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Learning is fun. And that's it for me today guys. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time.